Hello Year 5 artists, here we are doing our final painting together. So we're going to do a teacher on my one. You might have uh, one of our lovely lunchtime organisers or a cleaner or a classroom assistant, all the different people that work for our school. And we're just going to start off by drawing in the face. And because we're doing leger, we're actually going to start with the eyebrows. Let's have a look at Leger. He has a very particular way of drawing the eyebrows which go into the nose. So that's what we're going to start with. There's my eyebrow. And I'm looking at Miss and she's got um, thin eyebrows at the end and they're wider at the top. So I'm just sketching those in. And remember, when we do sketching, we don't do thick, hard lines until we're certain. I'm doing mine a little bit thicker, so this scene. Now, can you see that nose shape? It's that very distinct legere nose. And John Woodrow Wilson did the same as well. He had that sort of shape of nose. OK, which follow on from the eyebrows. So that's what I've done there. I'm joining on to the eyebrows. OK, and it's quite a flat nose um, for legere. This has not got a flat nose, but we're using that style. And once we've done that, we can continue copying in there so I've got my little bits to the side and I've got the shape of the eyebrows and once we've got those in we can work out where the eyes go and this is where you can look at your person so my lovely teacher here their eyes are narrower at the side there and get wider going towards the middle so I can do that as well but remember we're not trying to make it look real we, we described this as being naive art, didn't we? Which means simplified. And we know that we don't need to make it look like a photograph. We've got a photograph of Miss. That's not what it's about. We want to do it in the style, the naive style of Legere and John Woodrow Wilson. There, I've got one eye in. And I'm just sketching the other eye. There we go. I'm not colouring anything in, don't need to do that because this is just an outline drawing ready for us to paint. No one's going to see this, so you don't need to shade things in at this stage or anything like that. So there we go, I'm doing the top of the eyebrows now. And I'm reasonably happy with that. Um, just doing the bottom of the eyes. Now us adults, we all have little bags under our eyes because we all work so hard. So we'll draw those in. OK, so let's have a look at our legere again. And we need our little lines there joining onto our lips. Look at the lip shapes there. Do we see this? Now, that those two little lines are called the fulcrum under your nose. And I'm just going to draw in the mouth. If you look at Miss, the width of her mouth goes right to the middle of her eyes so everyone's slightly different but that's a good little proportion rule is to remember to look how far the mouth comes out and i'm just doing very simple lips like leger and john woodrow wilson sketching those in no detail now once you've finished doing that we need to paint it. So I'm going to do you some top tips of painting. Here we go. I've just got a bit of paper and I've got my plate with some black and white, but they're right on the opposite sides of the plates because I want a nice gap in the middle to mix my colours. Now, the first thing to do, top tip, look after your brushes. Keep the ends nice and smooth. If they're all rough, then your painting will be all rough. And what you can do is actually dip your fingers in your water and just smooth down your brushes. That's a really good way to look after them. So that's top tip one. Look after your brushes. Very important, they're your tool. OK, next thing, have clean water. This isn't a nice mug of tea. It's my lovely clean water ready to use as my water pot. If it's dirty, it's not going to work. And as soon as you get any black in there, then it is dirty. Now, it's OK for us because we are just using black and grey, but just bear that in mind. You, As soon as you get some black in that, 
it's not good. Now, look, do you notice I'm pulled a little bit of paint out and I'm just smoothing it onto the brush. I don't want a big blob. I don't just stick it straight into the paint and start painting. I smooth it out a little bit. And I've got some water on my brush, haven't I? That helps to make it smoother. But even then, do you see, it breaks up a little bit. That's because there's not enough water in. So I'm just gonna mix a tiny bit more water in. And it's easier to put more in than take it out. Can you see how nice and smooth that is now? I've got that the right thickness of paint, the right consistency, you see? So just having some control by not just sticking your brush in the paint, by actually spreading it properly on your brush and making sure it's the right thickness with a little bit of water in. And let's have a look here. There you go, nice line. And you'll notice, of course, that the bottom of the line has got darker than at the top of the line. That's because it's got more paint on it. So if you're doing a long line, you might need to dip your brush in to your paint again. But remember, make sure you've really smoothed it on first and put a little bit of water in so it runs smoothly. Now I'm going to show you a really thin brush now. So I had my medium one and my really nice flat thick one. The flat thick one's great for doing large amounts. So here we are, a few little lines, just showing you how nicely you can do that if you put the paint on nice and smoothly. You don't have big blobs of it on the end of your brush and you've diluted it a little bit, a bit of water. And you can see that, can you see how it's thinner at one end, the little line is thinner at one end than it is the other. That depends on how hard you push down. If you push down hard, it makes a thicker line. If you push down only a tiny bit like I'm doing at the start, it's thinner. And it's the same as I'm getting to the end. As I'm lifting my brush off, it's thinner at the end. Now this is very good if you're drawing or painting rather in hair. So it's a thinner end. That's how we do that. So there we go, my friends. A few top tips there of how we use our brushes and paint. Now let's have a look at here. It's dirty. We're going to want to change that in a minute. I'll show you why. I've changed my water and I'm taking out my brushes. I don't want to leave my brushes standing in the pot for a long time. It ruins the brushes if you do that. If you stick them in there, it squishes down the ends which isn't good for the brushes. It means you'll lose all that lovely shape. So just as before, you need to shape them. I'm just squeezing them into the water pot, making a nice tight shape with my brush and they're ready to go. Don't leave them in the water pot. So I'm going to be mixing some black and white together now. And I always start with the lighter color. Whenever you're doing color mixing, start with a lighter color. We're going to be using grey for our portraits and black and white called monochrome when you paint like that. So we want to be mixing different greys. Did you see how much I used a lot of white there and only a tiny bit of black, but look how dark that grey is. Oh, remember to use water to dilute it. Now that's a really dark grey, isn't it? There we go. Now if we're wanting to have a lighter grey, we would need to put in more white there. So even just that tiny dot of black, let's have a look there, a little tiny bit more. See how dark that gets? Really does get dark, doesn't it? With only a tiny bit of black. Black is incredibly powerful. Okay, so we've got a much darker grey now. Look at that colour difference. Now, can you see how it's uh, not been blended properly? Because we've got some really dark bits and lighter bits. So remember, you need to work it with your brush. You need a little bit of water and you need to work it to make sure those colours are mixed properly. Let's have a, another look. There we go. That's much better, much smoother colour. OK, no big lumps of black in there. Nice, smooth colour. OK. So if we want it lighter, we need more white. If we want it darker, we need more black. Now I'm just going to draw in an eye shape 
for you here because that's important. And I want to show you how we're going to block in colours and then outline. Even if your paper is white, you're still going to need to paint things in white. So here I am. If I was painting the eye, I start with my lighter colour first. If you do that with colour mixing, you do that with painting. Just start there. Colouring in the eye. And when you've done that colouring in of the eye, I'm going to show you the outline. Because that's what it's all about. Putting in the background colours, it's called blocking in, and then doing your detail or outlines on the top. Now, ideally, I would have waited five minutes just to let that paint dry a bit more, but I want to just speed through and show you. So there we are, I'm doing my outline of the eye. I'm just going around the detail there, and I'm just doing little bits at a time. I'm not trying to do the whole thing at once, one line, then another, and another just building up the shapes. Okay, I'll do it bigger for you um, so you can see more clearly. Let's make a really nice big eye for you here. The eye shape, very much like Leger and John Woodrow Wilson's shapes. That's the one. Just get in the shape. Can you see how mucky my water is? If I was just to take a little bit of that water and mix it in with the white, do you see how that's making grey? Just that tiny bit of dirt from the water stops it being brilliant white anymore. So there we go. I'm just filling in my eye. And of course, you'd fill in around the eye as well. Before There we go. Before you put in your outline. So this is called blocking. You do all your blocking of the colour ready for when you do your outlining. Block in the colours, or rather the tones of grey. And then you're going to do your outlining with your thinner brush, your pointed brush. Now you'll notice I'm using quite a big brush here and you can decide what size suits you best. I've put lots of different size brushes in with your materials box. Now look here, I'm using my hand, my finger, to rest on the paper. This is giving me some control of the brush. And I'm a little bit shaky still because I'm doing it on camera, so I've got a bit of pressure on. But it does help you to get a smoother line by just pressing your little finger in to the paper and did you notice how I was moving my hand across the paper there? I'm just filling that in because I did do a little shake. It's quite nervous painting on camera. And there we go, the top of the lid goes in. And keep that paint nice and smooth. Remember to use a little bit of water if it's not running smoothly. And you can just do little bits at a time. You can just stop if you begin to go wrong. Just take a moment to then carry on. Okay, I'm going to get right to the edge there. Bottom of the eye, round we go. Now, I felt confident to do that in one sweep, but if you want to stop, you just stop. And I'm using my hand to support my painting. And do you see there, it's a bit thin, so I'm just going to add a bit more. You see how... I've not got enough on there and I'm just bringing it round. So there you go. So this is what we need to do today. You need to draw in your portrait and then you're going to be blocking in your colours. There's another film to show you how to do that. But for now, just concentrate on drawing in your worker and then we'll do the painting. <laughs>